Okay, today we're going to discuss why to do a microwave and RF engineering, why RF and microwave frequencies are useful. We'll look at a few typical RF and microwave transceivers, why we up and down convert, drawbacks of RF and microwave, and some of the differences between our former design, which was lumped component design, and microwave design, which typically uses distributed component design. So first, what are the reasons that we use microwave and RF frequencies? Or what are the things that we do with them? Well, one of the first things that we can think of is wireless communications. A few others that we might think of are navigation by GPS, spectroscopy, radar and imaging, or radio astronomy. Of course, these aren't the only uses for RF and microwave frequencies, but they are some of the most common. Now, in communications, we often use what's called a transceiver. So let's look at a transceiver. Transceiver is a compound word. It's a combination of transmitter and receiver. So here we have the blocks shown for a typical transmitter. We take some data bits in and we convert them to analog using a DAC. We up convert them to high frequency using the combination of a mixer and a local oscillator. We have a driver amplifier, a power amplifier, and an antenna. We'll often see the power amplifier abbreviated, abbreviated as PA. Now the antenna takes the signal from the power amplifier and radiates it off into space where it will ultimately be collected, hopefully, by a target receiver. More or less what's happening in this chain is information in a signal is converted to from digital to analog. It's then up converted to higher frequency and then it's amplified to drive an antenna which radiates the signal into space. Now, this is a simplified drawing of a transmitter. There are many different architectures that improve on the basic functionality of this one, but all of the basics are shown here. Next, let's look at a receiver. A receiver works in the opposite direction of a transmitter. It receives signals from the air into the antenna. There's usually some front end amplification called an LNA or a low noise amplifier. It's down converted to low frequency using the combination of a mixer and a local oscillator. There's typically some filter. Shown here is a low pass filter. And then we convert to the digital domain with an analog to digital converter or ADC. Now, like with the transmitter, this is a very basic receiver and not all elements of more complicated architectures are shown, but all of the fundamental elements are here. <laughs> 